Sampling is a fundamental part of statistics. If statistics was Captain Planet, I'd say sampling is heart. Well, not heart, but, but one of the actually good ones. My point is, it's crucial as a student of statistics to get your head around sampling. And that's what this video is about. We're going to be distinguishing between the concepts of population and sample. And we'll also look at the standard error of the sample mean, which is a crucial measure of uncertainty. And we'll see how that differs between when we're sampling from a finite population versus an infinite population. This is the nitty gritty, folks. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is how it's going to pan out. Firstly, we're going to have a look at sampling from a theoretical standpoint. What is it? And why is it absolutely fundamental to the study of statistics? We'll then look at three particular scenarios. One where we're sampling from an infinite population, or at least a theoretically infinite population. Another where we're sampling from a finite population. Now, this is not particularly common, but it is useful to look at because it really ties together both the infinite population situation and the final example, which is where we're sampling the whole population itself. And just a note here that sampling from a finite population is often termed sampling without replacement. But I'll inspect that a little closer later on. Now, these might not mean too much to you in abstract, but we're going to deal with a concrete example, and it's a pretty fun one. So why don't you come along for the ride, and we'll see how we go. Okay, so what is sampling? With any measurement we want to take, let's just say blood pressure or something like that, there's a population that is relevant to those measurements. And so maybe it's a population of people with hepatitis C, for example. Now, of course, we can't collect everybody that has hepatitis C and calculate their blood pressure. So instead, we take a small sample. And this is just due to practicalities, right? It's usually impossible to get information on the whole population. So we have to make do with a small sample. Now we want to use the sample to make inferences about the population. And it's this task which is actually the crux of statistics itself. You might have heard the term statistical inference. And this is exactly what that's talking about. How can we take a small sample and generalize it to the population? So once we take a sample, we generally have three questions that we want to ask in order to get that inference about the population. One, what's our best estimate of the population mean? Now, of course, we only have a small sample with which to estimate that population mean, but we can generate what's called a sample mean from our sample. Pretty easy, right? So if you only have a certain amount of hepatitis C sufferers that we're sampling, we can take the mean of that sample, say for their blood pressure, and that becomes the best estimate for the population mean. Now, the second question is how confident are we about that estimate? Now, appreciate because we only have a small sample, we can't be sure that that sample mean is exactly the population mean. There's going to be some variation around our estimate, some uncertainty, right? So, along with our sample mean, we're also after this thing called the standard error of the sample mean. Now, don't, don't get too worked up over the acronym here. It's the standard error of the sample mean. You can see how that's going to relate to the sample mean above. And obviously, this relates to how uncertain we are about our estimate. So, the higher this standard error of the sample mean, the more uncertain we are that our sample mean reflects the true population mean. So typically, if we have a very small sample, we'll have quite a large standard error here. Now, the third question we can ask is, what is our best estimate of the population standard deviation? So not only will our sample give us information about the possible population mean, our sample might also give us information about the possible population standard deviation, or how spread the population is likely to be. And this is given the symbol S, lowercase s, for the sample's standard deviation. 
Now we're going to be calculating these three measures for each of the scenarios we'll deal with. And it's a little bit tricky because part and parcel of this standard error of the sample mean is in fact the sample's standard deviation. So again, I, I can see people getting confused between two and three here, but let's go through the examples. And I really think you're going to find yourself being crystal clear by the end. So let's keep going. So let's see what happens when we sample from an infinite population. And this is a very typical scenario when one samples something. So for example, if I'm trying to estimate the average height of basketballers from the following sample. So here I have a sample of five. There we go, n equals five. Now that's a lowercase n representing the fact that it's a sample's number of observations. So lowercase n equals five. And we know that to find the sample mean, we sum up all the observations and divide by the number of observations in the sample. Easy. So I'm not going to show you the working out, but the answer is 2.026 meters. And that's our sample mean for this sample. And it's also our best estimate for the true population mean. Now appreciate the population that this question is actually referring to. It's asking us to estimate the average height of basketballers. Which basketballers? In fact, all basketballers ever. I mean, typically this would probably be a uh, cross-sectional sample. So it would be all basketballers currently playing, right? Now, of course, that's not an infinite number, but it's large enough that in this case, we can treat it pretty much like an infinite number. And that's essentially what you're going to be doing every time you take a sample. Now, the second question we might want to ask, much like I signposted earlier, is how confident are we in this estimate? So how confident are we that the population mean height for basketballers is 2.026 meters? Well, of course, if we took a different sample, say we just had another random sample, the sample mean would be different. But how different? How can we get a measure of this uncertainty? Well, this is where the standard error of the sample mean comes into it. And it's constructed by S on root N, which is the standard deviation that we can calculate, divided by the square root of N, which will be the square root of five. So while we're primarily interested in the standard error of X bar, or how uncertain this character is, we're gonna to need to calculate this little sucker first. This S is the standard deviation we can calculate from the sample. Now that's just a common standard deviation. You know how to do this. You've done standard deviations of samples before. It's the sum of X minus X bar all squared over N minus one. Now, because this is a sample, we know the degrees of freedom here will be N minus one. And if you're curious, I'll put up a link here for a video I've done, an extensive video on degrees of freedom, but we won't go into depths here. And if you sub it all in, or in my case, if you just use Excel to do it, you'll get 0 0.1053 meters. So this is our standard deviation of our sample. Now, when we divide that by root N, we'll get 0 0.0471 meters. So this is what's called the standard error of the sample mean. And indeed now, we've got our three important pieces of information that we like to see when we take a sample. We've got our sample mean, that's our best estimate for the population mean. We've got some kind of measure of how confident we are about this sample mean. And we can also find our estimate for the population's standard deviation. This of course being S, the samples standard deviation. So one, two, three, that's all we wanted from this particular example. Okay, now this is very basic statistics which you'll get taught and you can apply all the formula but I wanted to kind of give you that intuitive sense of what we're calculating here because we're about to compare it now to when we're sampling from a finite population. Now, as I said a little earlier, this is very uncommon in practice because typically if there's a finite population, you're probably gonna have the whole population in your sample anyway, which will drag us into the following scenario here where you've actually got in your sample all of the observations from the population. But as I said, it's a nice stepping stone. So let's have a look at it. So here's the example. Estimate the average height of all 1992-93 Chicago Bulls players from the following sample of five players. 
So guess what? It's the same five players. And in this case, we're trying to estimate the average height of all of the players. And let's say there are 14 players in the whole basketball team. And here we only have five. So you can see we have a finite population, 14, right? So little n is five for our sample, big N is 14. Now it's worth mentioning here that these five players were selected out of the 14 without replacement. In other words, we can't select the same player twice. Obviously, right? And in these scenarios, we say we're sampling without replacement. And so that's why sampling without replacement is equivalent to a finite population. If we somehow were sampling with replacement, that's effectively an infinite population. So keep that in mind in case that's the terminology that you use or you've seen in your textbooks. Now calculating the sample mean is going to be trivial just like the last time, sum of x on n. No difference there. We find the sample mean again is 2.026 meters. Now here's the new question. How confident are we in that estimate? Now before I show you the answer, have a think about it. Do you think we're going to be more confident this time in this particular mean or are we going to be less confident than when we had an infinite population? Well, let's think about it this way. Taking 5 out of 14, we actually have a significant proportion of the whole population in our sample. And you can think of the absurd example where capital N might be 6. Let's just say the population was only one more than our sample. Well, we've pretty much got the whole population in our sample, so we should be very sure about our sample mean. But even so, in this case, we should be more sure about this being the true population mean than we were in the initial example. Now, let's see the formula, and this might freak some people out, but all it is is the original standard error of the sample mean, and then we times it by this multiplier and we're not going to go into depth as to how this works. But all this does is takes account of the proportion of the whole population that we have in our sample. So we're going to be doing exactly the same thing. We still need this S, which is calculated in exactly the same way. So it's still a sample. So the degrees of freedom issue hasn't gone anywhere. The sample standard deviation is 0.1053. So that's a measure of the spread right, the spread of the data. And in this case, if you sub everything in, it looks ugly as hell, right? But they're just numbers and we can get 0 0.0391. Which if you can remember, when we compare that to the original, it's actually a bit less. The standard error here is a little bit less than we saw in the previous example. And that's no surprise, right? Because we actually have proportionately more information about the population than we did in the first example. After all, the population is only 14 people. Okay, so how are you going? Hopefully that didn't freak you out too much. The important bit now is coming where we're sampling the whole population and this will hopefully tie in a lot of statistical concepts in one go. So if you're stuck with me, let's keep going. So my question here is, what's the average height of the 92-93 Chicago Bulls starting five. So here are those heights again. And lo and behold, they actually represent particular people. These are the starting five of the Chicago Bulls. And I dare say this question might date me somewhat, but let's have a think about what we're actually testing here. It's asking us the average height of the starting five. And this is the starting five. So this is technically no longer a sample, right? We have the whole population in our hands. There's no observations that sit outside the sample that we care about. So you can see I've got capital N equals five here. So in this case, the mean, I've actually, know, I've actually given it the symbol mu here instead of X bar. And the reason is we now have a whole population. And this is where that statistical definition of population comes into it, right? You wouldn't think of this as a population of people. It's only five people, right? But when we're concerned with the Chicago Bulls starting five from that season, this is them. So it's the sum of X on capital N this time. Which it's all well and good to talk about theoretical differences, but here the mean is exactly the same as if it was X bar 
and it was indeed a sample. So who cares for the time being, right? Now here's the question. How confident are we in this estimate of the population mean? Hmm. We're actually perfectly confident. The standard error of this particular figure here is going to be zero. And if you read into what I've written here, the standard error of mu, well, that's the standard error of a constant, right? That's the, that's the population mean, which is always considered, theoretically at least, a constant. So it's no surprise that we actually get zero here for our standard error. Now check this out. In the previous slide when we were looking at sampling from a finite population, we saw this formula. Now this formula still actually kind of applies. In this case, capital N is five, which is the same as little n. So the numerator here becomes zero and the whole thing just collapses to zero as well, right? Now you can still think of this as a sample from a finite population, but it just so happens the number of observations in the sample equals the number of observations in the population. So this numerator goes to zero and we get no standard error. And the extra fun thing about this is that in the very, very first example where we were looking at an infinite population, what happens if you sub in infinity for both of these capital N's? Well, hopefully you can see that this whole thing will resolve to one because infinity on infinity is going to be one, square root of which is also one. And so this whole thing kind of disappears and you're left with S on root N, which was the formula in that first instance. So this formula here, even though it looks really gross, is kind of applying in each of these scenarios. So hopefully you can see why I really wanted to show you sampling from a finite mean because it does tie them all together. Quite cool, right? So let's go back to the instance here when we've got the standard error of mu is zero. We nonetheless can still find the population standard deviation because we have the population here. There's five observations. We can find the spread of this data by simply using the population standard deviation formula. And you'll notice I've got mu in here instead of x bar. And I also have n instead of n minus one on the bottom. So, again, not doing the calculations, the answer here is 0 0.0941. So again, we've got our three pieces of information. Okay, so that hopefully has tied together a lot of what sampling is all about, with the linchpin being this kind of finite population business in the middle. Anyway, the first time I put this all together when I was studying statistics, I had a bit of a, a mind blow where all these bitsy things that I was learning all came together. So I was hoping to share that with you and I'm, I guess, optimistically hoping that you might have found the same watching that video. But let's have a quick look at the summary now for all the three tests that we did. So we had the infinite population here. That's where we were just looking at basketballers. Here we were looking at Chicago Bulls team members and the final one we had just the starting five. The sample mean in each case was the same. I guess we could call this the population mean, if you like. The standard error of the sample mean was slightly lower in this second example because we had proportionately more information about the population. And of course, I put a dash here because we don't have a sample mean. We have the true population mean here. So the standard error of this is zero, if you like. And then we can find the standard deviation, the estimate of the standard deviation in each case. It was the same for the first two because indeed they were samples, but it was slightly less in the final case. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. All my videos I put up on zstatistics.com, which I've spent the last sort of few weeks beautifying. So hopefully it's looking a little bit nicer than it did in previous incarnations. But thanks for watching. Feel free to drop me a line in the comments because I do read them all. But otherwise, I'll see you later.